Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session on the Journal on Empowering Teaching Excellence, JEET. Um, we're going to talk today about the Journal on Empowering Teaching Excellence, JEET, um, in a presentation about higher education research. And we're calling it Why Higher Education Research Matters. Um, so thank you for watching us today. And I hope we will give you a basic introduction of what the Journal on Empowering Teaching Excellence is all about and giving you some ideas of why it matters and ways you can be involved, because we really want you to be involved. If you've made the step of watching this with us, um, then that's like a contract that you want to be involved in helping us out. So that seems good to me. Um, first of all, we should talk about who we are. And I am Jason Olson. Hi. Hello, in fact, as the slide says. Um, I'm the editor-in-chief um, for the, the JEET journal. Um, I am an associate professor of English and I teach at the USU Eastern Campus in Price. Um, I've been involved with G for a few years. I was the assistant editor with the previous editor-in-chief, Kim Hales, uh, for a couple of, of issues prior to, to the most recent one. And the spring 2022 issue was my first as editor-in-chief. And, um, and I brought somebody else with me. Hi, Michelle. Hi, yeah, my name is Michelle Frank. Um, I am uh, the assistant editor. So just coming in as uh, spring issue was my first issue being involved. I'm also an assistant professor at the Price campus for USU Eastern. Um, and I teach history and all sorts of different varieties of US history and public history and all that. Um, got involved with JEET because I'm really strong on developing good teaching skills and learning about the learning process and, and how I teach and how students learn. Um, so joining JEET and being part of this was a way to get more involved as, um, as somebody with very hands-on experience. Thank you, Nichelle. It's absolutely true. It's why I wanted to get involved with this in the first place a few years ago, too. Um, I really love the work that ETE does. And we don't need to talk too much about ETE because you're at the conference. And, and so you, you've heard a lot of great things, all justified, about, about what, what goes on with ETE. Um, and this journal is sort of a wing of that. And, and the idea of being able to make accessible to so many people um, a lot of great research and discussions about teaching is really valuable to me. And I feel like I'm a better teacher because I've gone through so many articles, read so many articles, and really thought about teaching in a way that, that I didn't do before. And you don't have to just be on the editorial staff to get that. You really can be engaged in a lot of different ways. We'll talk about that as we go on. So we've used these letters, JEET, um, a lot here. But let's talk a little bit about what it is. Um, the Journal on Engaging Teaching Excellence was started in 2017 as part of ETE. So we've been around for a few years, but we're still, still in the developing stage of, of what we are. Um, though, as I said, um, Kim Hales was the editor-in-chief um, prior to me, and, and Kim did an amazing job in really developing G. And we've gone from being a journal that was mostly publishing articles written by um, USU faculty and, 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 and people involved in the USU community, which is no bad thing because we got some brilliant folks out here. Um, but it's gone from being mostly USU to, to going more nationwide with submissions from, from uh, writers and researchers all over the country to even globally. We've had articles written by people um, across the globe. Engagement is across the globe too. Um, one of the most uh, in, engaging parts of our, our G software is I get to look around and see where people are downloading the software. And I spend too much time sometimes um, seeing how many views and downloads we're getting from different parts across the, the world. I, you know, you go in there, it's like, oh my gosh, we've gotten three downloads from Norway. What, what the heck is happening? Tucson talk, um, but what's happening? And, and so it's really exciting to see it develop. And it feels like with each issue, we're getting more downloads, we're getting more engagement, we're getting more global. Um, there's really a need that's been filled by G. Um, we publish pedagogical articles um, and book reviews from academics across the globe. So the types of articles, and we'll talk about more about that in a, a few minutes, but the, there's a need for this. One of the other important things about JEEP is it's open source. This is available to everyone. Um, you go to the ETE website, you click on publications, you go to JEEP, you have access to every journal issue that we've published. It's all there um, through the amazing work of people in ETE. Um, Neil Legler is doing phenomenal work making this as accessible to everybody as possible. 
uh, is is just extraordinary on what we're able to do and get this information out. And and so I'm I'm very proud of what we're doing. And there's a great legacy that's been started in 2017 and continued on. And Michelle and I are excited to to continue to to push things forward and get great information out to as many of us as we can. All right, and just to give you a little bit more insight into some of the, the things that we focus on, who this journal is open to, what it really does, um, this is actually taken directly off our website, uh, telling you a little bit more about that. So this academic peer review journal targets higher education professionals who engage in the design and practice of instruction. This includes tenure and non-tenure track faculty who teach, instructional designers, librarians, graduate teaching assistants, graduate instructors, and other instructional professionals. So we're really open to a wide variety of people. Um, you don't have to just be like a tenure track uh, faculty member to be involved with JEET um, to get things published, all that kind of stuff, learn from JEET, um, that we really are open to a lot of different professionals who are just very engaged in the idea of instruction. So that's a big goal for us. And, and I think it's an important one to accentuate. That's why I wanted to, we wanted to make sure we shared this today. Because uh, I think a lot of people do think like, oh, it's an academic journal, okay. Tenure track professors are just going to, to talk about their research. No, I mean, we want this to be as, as, as ubiquitous for as many people as possible. So, so I love this. I love that we have this language in here. Um, this also applies not just to the writing of articles, but to the reviewing and the peer reviewing of articles too. Um, because we're going to be asking you very directly here in a minute to help us out as peer reviewers and review articles. And, and so that doesn't mean that we only want to hear from tenure, non-tenure track faculty either. People who are involved in instructional design and librarians and graduate teaching, this, this is for you too. Um, all of us here care about students. We care about teaching, even if we interact with students in different ways, because maybe the way that I interact with students as an as a instructor is different than the way that perhaps an instructional designer is doing it. But we're just all engaging with students and we're, we're in different ways and trying to, to make their experiences as beneficial as possible and our own. Um, so I love being able to be as, as open to different perspectives as possible. If we only think about one perspective when it comes to teaching, we're not gonna learn anything. Um, and this is a great way of getting as many of those perspectives as possible. And you know, I like the language on our JEET website so much. I, we took more. <laughs> um, and this is, this is more about the types of things that we wanna see um submitted and so so i wanted to include this here so that, that we can talk a little bit more about this so so here's who we are inviting we're inviting educators researchers and instructional designers to promote share and discuss emerging ideas articles and reviews are focused on higher education teacher practitioner based methods in all course delivery formats with focus on the following general categories student engagement teaching and learning evaluation, instructional design strategies, content resources and tools, technology implementation reviews, and teaching book reviews. <clears throat> As I told you before, um, this started out in 2017. I, I don't know if you remember those days of 2017. It was a very different world that we, we lived with back then. And obviously there were a lot of efforts to, to push different methods of delivery, um, different styles of, of technology. But there were a lot of instructors that were like, ah, face-to-face, -face. that's what I'm gonna do. If I have to do other things, that's that's fine. Even though there were a lot of people who were interested in instructional design that were trying to show us different perspectives. And some of us actually listened, but most of us didn't um, because we wanted to focus in on, on the ways that we've had before. And then somewhere between 2017 and 2022, the entire world went to skew, right? And, and now we're all looking for new methods. And, and it's such an important thing that we're doing the, to, to have this journal at a time in which there's so much flux in, in the way classes are taught and the way technology is ch changing things and, and being involved. And so when we say these things, one of the key words I want to really focus on is the idea of emerging ideas. Um, that we're all trying different things. Over the last couple of years, 
this this has absolutely been a time of just trying stuff out and seeing what happens. And we've all tried it. And some of it has worked beautifully. And some of it we're not going to want to pitch to a journal. And that's fine. But but a lot of it are are, are things that have, have worked for us. And so many of the articles that we've gotten and been able to publish and will be publishing in the, the near future are about these attempts. You know, so many of our articles are about things that people have tried and, and ways in which they've worked. And so I wanted to include this so that we can see these ideas of, of how we discuss it. And, and before this presentation, Michelle and I were spending some time talking about just our, our most recent issue, which is the issue that we put together together and, and, and thinking about how the articles that we, we published really tie in to all of these things that, that we, we, we fit the goals of the journal nicely based on what we had in there. And we have um, articles that are about um, student engagement with technology. Um, we have articles about or an article about student engagement in our, our spring 22 issue um, with learning language and language learning and how students have felt that that has impacted them. We had an article about problem based learning. Um, we had a couple of articles, um, and this is what Nichelle and I remember most because it was such an interesting thing that we got to publish two articles about this. Um, teachers that were using um, student drawings, so they asked their students to, to, to do illustrations of how they interacted with course material to, to show how the learning was taking place. Um, so these really interesting and innovative ways, some that engage technology and some that didn't, that, that engaged just different processes and emerging ideas that, that were so fascinating and interesting for us. That last one on here is about teaching book reviews. And we try every issue to include a book review or two. And, and I really want you to strongly consider um, writing a book review for us. And, and we you can, you can interact with us. I'll, I'll have an email available for you to, to interact with us shortly so you can ask questions. But we love to get book reviews of texts that are about higher education and learning methods. Um, I wrote a book review in the last issue. I'm happy. I'm proud of it. It was a great book. Um, I don't want to write any more, friends. Um, let's let's make sure that we get some 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 book reviews. And and you might wonder, like, well, what what kind of book should I be writing about? Well, like I said, higher education, um, student st student engagement is great. A lot of the books that we have as part of learning circles with ETE are books that would lend themselves really really well for writing book reviews. And, and when you're writing a book review, and, and you know, we can talk about, it, you can always ask us questions. It's kind of weird for us to be asynchronous because I really want to be hearing questions right now. Um, but we can do that afterwards. You, you can send questions to, to us and I'm, we're happy to engage. Um, but you can write a book review that kind of talks about the methodology, talks about the purpose, talks about the value of it. And, and like I said, when you've had a learning circle and you've talked about a given book over the course of, of a learning circle, and then you get to write about it, you really put a lot of thought into it. And we would love to get those. I, I think that's great. Um, Michelle, do you have anything to add to any of these these um, categories? Um, not, not a whole lot. I mean, I, I agree putting the emphasis on a lot of this is very experimental in a lot of ways where we, we get articles from people who have tried something. Um, it worked well in some ways, maybe it didn't work super well in other ways. And they'll discuss that, you know, like things that they'll do differently in the future. And that's great. I mean, it's, it's all about the learning process for everyone, you know, like what they learned in trying some new idea in their classroom. So we welcome that kind of publication, that kind of thinking process. It's, it's really beneficial to the larger community of everyone who's involved in instruction. So um, yeah, I would encourage people, even if you're feeling a little bit like, well, it went okay, <laughs> but maybe it's worth putting out there into the world. And maybe that will get you um, some other people who are interested and you'll get contacted. So I uh, just strongly encourage people to consider submitting, even if they're um, maybe considering changes to something you did. So that would be another thing. I, I love what you said about um, the community, because I, I really feel that as part of what we do here. It feels like we're part of of a community, even if we have so many people from so many different backgrounds, and as I've said, different states and countries and institutions. Um, but we're all kind of do, trying to do the same thing, which is figure out how the heck to do this impossible thing we do, right? Which is teaching in higher education. Um, and and you know, one thing that we do is you you submit 
an article, if you have a research article where you've you've done something innovative and interesting in the classroom, um, you want to talk about it. We we will have outside reviewers go through it. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a sec, but we'll have outside reviewers go through it and then we'll give you feedback and then you'll have a chance to revise and, and, and improve. I, I really like to emphasize the process um, aspect of this because it's so important for us because we are a community and we want to help each other and we want to help each other get our ideas to a larger audience. And that's such an important thing. So. so here's how you can get involved. We kind of already talked about these things, but here it is. Um, you can write an article. Um, that might feel really imposing. Um, and and for some of us, it, it it feels like, you know, everything you do, you, you want to write an article about it. And if, if that's the case, goodness sake, send it our way. Um, if, if you, and remember, this isn't something we do alone. As Nichelle just said, this is about collaboration. It's about community. You can, you can work on it with others. You can find other researchers um, maybe on your campus here at USU or, or elsewhere. We've had plenty of articles written by people at a number of different campuses um, or different universities even. Um, but if that feels imposing, as we talked about, you can write a review of a book about higher ed teaching, or um, you can become a peer review editor, uh, which I suggest you do um, if you haven't already, no matter where you are. Um, and because what this what this means is that you will give us your name and your field. And that's really important. We'll talk about why in just a minute. But you'll give us your, your field and your, your contact info. And we will, when we find an article that feels like you would be a really good reader for it, we'll send it to you. Um, so let's say you are in a criminal justice field and we have an article that deals with some aspect um, of juvenile detention or something like that. We'll send it to you. Um, if you're in criminal justice and I have this really interesting article about dietary sciences or something, I might not send it to you. Um, but if it's within the field, I, I, I would see you as somebody who might be a good fit for this. So you would get articles that are as closely related to your discipline or interest as we can. Now, there are some times where maybe an article is general and I might, I might send it out to somebody who, who maybe has a more specific field, but it is, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it doesn't feel like a logical fit, but it felt like it. But we really like to try to find very close matches if we can. Um, it, it, Michelle, would, do you want to talk about the peer review process? You, you peer reviewed an article more recently than I did. Um, so, so how does it work? Yeah, um, being a peer reviewer, you, you get that that article. Um, we have an automated messaging system that will give you all the information, give you the links, all that kind of stuff. Um, we send you a template uh, to give you a guideline on how to review, what to be paying attention to. Um, and then you fill that out, send it back to us. We send it back to the author or authors um, and then if there were changes that they needed to make, we asked them to make those changes. Um, and they send it back to you as a peer reviewer just to look over things again, um, if there was any sort of major revisions required. And then if it looks good from there, we'll go ahead and put it through for publication. Um, so being a peer reviewer, it, it's great. I mean, you get exposed to different ways of thinking about maybe your own field or even more broadly, um, thinking through just like, what are some instructional things that go on in other fields? Um, so that actually sometimes happens when we're assigning peer reviewers. Uh, we actually would love to get a lot more peer reviewers because we have so many people who are very much like part of doing instructional design and things like that, but we love reviewers from all fields. Um, so we, we would love to see more of that, that way we can match people a little bit more to their fields um, and not necessarily have to push really far outside, um, like the example that Jason gave a little bit earlier. Um, but becoming a peer reviewer, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. We have a lot already, so it's not like a heavy burden where you'd be being asked to peer review all the time or anything like that. Um, so all of that makes it a pretty simple process. And then, yeah, Jason just put on the screen how to go through this process. And um, I, so many things that you just said are really valuable. And, and one of them was the idea that, that you don't have to do this all the time. If you become a reviewer for us, 
that does not mean that we're going to reach out to you, um, you know, six times a year to, to review an article. Um, and if we do, tell us to stop. It's fine. Um, because we have in our system, it tells us, like, has this person been asked to review something in the last 12 months, something like that? How many times has this person reviewed something? And I, I want to be very conscientious of that because um, we know how valuable our time is and, and we know how protective we get of, of our, our time. And, and so I don't want to feel like, like we're trying to take advantage of that. So we take no for an answer. It's okay. It doesn't mean we wouldn't try again, but we will try to take no for an answer. Um, to become a reviewer, I have this link here. Um, this is to a Qualtrics survey. And basically what this does is it asks who you are, what your field is, and get some contact information. So, so if, you could, if you could go to that, and I just have it here as this rather long link. If you want to get it directly, you can contact me. Um, and to contact uh, Jeet, I, I have to contact DTE. Let's put a J in front of that. Um, to contact Jeet, just go to Jeet at USU.edu. Um, those emails will go to me. Um, I, I think to both of us, actually, but but it will go to me. And so if you want like an easier way to access that link, or if you want to ask any questions at all, just please do it. Uh, we're, we're happy to do it because we we know how collaborative this is. We know how community oriented we want, it, want this to be. So all the interactions we can get with you are encouraged. Uh, we do not get to do this alone. Oh gosh, what, a, what an undertaking that would be. Um, and, and the fact that we have so many people who care as deeply about working with students and, and improving higher ed, uh, it makes it so much easier. But remember what we said earlier about all those different um, People, no matter who you are, if you're tenure track, non-tenure track, librarian, instructional design, um, grad student, any of that stuff, teaching assistant, any of that stuff um, works for, for articles that we publish for reviews or, or research articles. It really matters. It doesn't matter for us either with reviewers. So no matter who you are, um, we'd love to have you as a reviewer. And, and so please reach out. Um, thank you so much. For, for spending some time with us here um, and talking about G. And please, as we said earlier, I, I really love the interactive part of these presentations and it feels weird um, that, that we didn't get to do it. So thank you for being here, Michelle. We at least got to interact with each other. Um, but if you wanna reach out to us, please contact us through the, the G um, address at jeet at usu.edu so, so we can get a sense of what you're thinking and ask any questions. Um, anything. Um, I'm, I'm happy to help out. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a treat to get to talk to you today.